Hello everybody, it's Kirsty. You know me, I solve crimes and do such things using astrology. Today I'm going to have a look at two charts for you guys and they are in relation to what will happen in court for Letitia Stalk. So a horror question I asked is one of them and it and basically I asked a very extensive horror question. <laughs> so thank you universe for listening. I want to know everything from her appearance to what she's going to say, do, what's going to happen to her and the outcome. I also have a sec a, a date, a second chart of June the 8th. She's having an appearance on the 5th of June and the 8th. The 5th is about the dissolution of the marriage, the divorce. The 8th will be about the case. So we're going to have a look at the 8th of June at 9am, which is when it's set for. So I won't carry on anymore. Let's have a look at the charts. Here we have the chart that I asked on the 29th of April at 1.52 in the morning so obviously I was just laying there in bed thinking what on earth is going to happen to her what's she going to do so I pulled a chart because I was so invested in wanting to know so when you do a horary chart it's really best to do it when you're fully invested in the thought of wanting to know the answer for some reason and it's magical really the universe listens to your question and answers it very clearly in the chart okay so first of all i'll explain what rules what in legal matters so this area here the ascendant and this house which is this one here is the first house and that is the plaintiff or Letitia. The prosecutor is opposite the DC and the seventh house is the prosecutor. Jupiter also co-rules the prosecutor. The defense is ruled by Mars the judge himself is ruled by the ninth house cusp, Jupiter, Sagittarius, and even incorporates the Sun, Libra, Venus, the seventh house, and the fourth house. And the reason is because the judge incorporates the, the plaintiff the defense, the, the, the prosecutor, sorry, the defense, the end of the matter and everything and deliberates that. A jury, if there is one, is ruled by the ninth house, but also by Jupiter. As you'll know, in law, horary, the ninth house is really important. Um, juries are also Venus, and um, the fourth house, the IC, and that's because they determine the end of the matter, the result. Witnesses are represented by Mercury and the Moon. The result of the the court case is the IC or the fourth house and prison is represented by the twelfth house this one here Neptune Pisces and also Saturn as well so this is where we're going to look to see what is going to happen to her so I just spent a little bit of time and popped where things are so you can have a look at that and see who's what and what's who okay so 
Letitia herself is the plaintiff and that's the ascendant at one degree of Pisces and Neptune which is the modern ruler of Pisces is in the first house. The first thing this tells me is that I believe that Letitia is probably going to try and plead insanity. Neptune represents insanity not all not that's not everything it represents but it does and Pisces she's going to play the compassionate card feel sorry for me because I have a mental illness that's the first thing that I see now the prosecutor is ruled by Virgo now Virgo is very meticulous and straightforward that's what her prosecutor is he is represented by Mercury so witnesses are also represented by Mercury so because the prosecutor himself is represented by Virgo and then Mercury I believe that a big portion of his argument or his case is going to be witnesses or the people on that list that we saw the neighbors most probably the neighbors because being in the third house here also shows neighbors now Uranus is right next door to Mercury and Uranus is sudden unexpected events so I expect that possibly a witness may be somebody unexpected or may come up with some unexpected information that will surprise everybody and this will be communicated at trial so expect something out of the blue to happen in terms of a witness if it's not specifically a witness it'll be something that the prosecutor comes out with he'll verbally say something and it'll be a shock something that nobody knows except him okay so the judge is ruled by Scorpio and Scorpio is ruled by Mars now unfortunately but it doesn't really matter too much but the defense is also ruled by Mars so you could think of it in two ways one way is is that the judge is going to be leaning towards what the defense says but another way is that he'll be on to the defense's story I don't believe that he will believe what he's being told by the defense that's my opinion see when we get to the tenth house which is the judge's verdict that is ruled by Sagittarius which is then in turn ruled by Jupiter judge see we've got the judge and the judge so that shows me that this judge is going to be no nonsense and I don't believe that it, he may err on the side of the defense at a certain point and maybe we may go oh no something's going to go wrong but I don't believe it will ultimately because Sagittarius rules the judge's verdict which is Jupiter that's him and that's the the ruler of so much in law is Jupiter and it is conjunct Saturn which is jail but uh, it's strict and has boundaries and knows what it is doing so to me it shows the judge has a very good grasp of the case and where he's going to go with it now the fact that the judge sits or resides in the 12th house of jail shows me that his initial thinking is that this person this the plaintiff is definitely going to be going to jail now what I find interesting is Mars in the 12th house often in legal horror represents a death sentence now I realize that Colorado has stopped capital punishment but 
I know that the date that it stops from is the 1st of July 2020. So I do believe that the prosecutor is going to go for the death penalty. And I just have this feeling that she will be the last person ever that receives the death penalty in Colorado for this crime. If that's not the case, I can see she is going to get a life sentence. Now, at the start, I thought, oh, I can see with all these ones, Mercury's at one, the Ascendant's at one, Saturn's at one, early degrees, I thought, oh no, maybe she won't get a full life sentence, but it would be 40 years minimum and I'd be so surprised. I, I don't think that's going to happen, but on the lesser side it would be 40 years, but I believe it would be life and I wouldn't be surprised if it was actually death and the final death sentence in Colorado before they finish it. If you commit a crime after the 1st of July 2020, you won't get the death sentence, but she committed this crime in January, allegedly. So she qualifies to go and be put to death for execution. So yeah, I think the prosecutors are considering it. The chart shows that it's possible that it could happen. Now Saturn here, which represents jail, but is also authority and um, Saturn rules naturally over the 10th house which is the ju judge's verdict shows uh, it um, the 12th house here which is jail is at two degrees of Aquarius and Saturn is at one degree of Aquarius so it's going to cross into the 12th house where it shows that she will be definitely imprisoned for a long period of time until she's an old person and that's what Saturn is father time so until she's an old person unless of course she gets the death penalty because the defense hasn't got a good enough defense against this judge's um, his own feelings on the case now I'm not a hundred percent sure whether this is going to be a jury case or not but Venus represents the jury and Venus is in the fourth house, which is the end result. So this actually shows me that it's likely a jury will give the end result. But being in Gemini and the end result being in Gemini makes me slightly concerned that it won't be a hung jury. It'll be someone hasn't isn't going to go along with the others because Gemini is two, two different things. So there's two different ways that this could go. And I think what it is going to be, it, it will be, if it's a jury case, they will want to do the death sentence, but one or two people won't. That's my feeling on it. So I, I will have to wait and see on that one. But the end result here, again, like I said, is Gemini, and that Gemini is also, it's ruled by Mercury, which, and co-ruled by the Moon, which is the witness. Both of them are the witnesses. So the end result may definitely rely on either a jury, if a jury is called, or whatever the prosecutor says or shows from witness witness videos or witness testimony that type of thing now this is the chart for 9 a.m. on the 8th of June now there is a court date like I said on the 5th of June but that's in relation to her divorce so the one on the 8th of June will be as far as I'm aware basically the beginning of the proceedings of the the case so this is an event chart not a horror chart now we have to remember that so she's called into court at 9 a.m but that doesn't necessarily mean 
that she will be in court at 9 a.m. So it could move slightly forward or slightly earlier depending on what happens on that day. But as it stands, we, this is what we have. Leo rising, so the plaintiff is her there and that's Leo. Again, early degrees, two degrees here, two degrees here. Prosecutor is ruled by Saturn this time. That's in Aquarius. Saturn is conjunct the seventh house of law or the open enemy. So the prosecutor has authority in this situation. He's got the upper hand in this court case 100%. Now, the ninth house here is ruled by Pisces. The ruler of of the modern ruler of Pisces is Neptune which is very closely conjunct to it so once again this shows me that in court she is likely to play the insanity card but now maybe the defense which is Mars it's very close to Neptune here conjunct the ninth house the, it seems the defense is going to try and use the insanity plea as well or some type of story of compassion or empathy to try and make someone or uh, the judge or the jury feel sorry for her unfortunately Mars the defense sits in the eighth house of death and the part of fortune is in the eighth house of death so it's not well positioned for him in terms of what the case is about. Now, so as I said, it's ruled by Jupiter and Jupiter is the judge anyway and the law and all those other things we discussed. So that is in the sixth house. Now, what's interesting is the sixth house is the ruler for the armed forces, bureaucracy, the death of a stepchild, doctors, and yeah, that's uh, uh, that's those. So, <clears throat> so we have the judge considering what the prosecution is saying about her life in the um, um, you know living in the armed forces. Uh, sorry, what the defence is saying about that and utilising that, that maybe that sent her over the top. Her health was affected because of the armed forces, because Al worked away, etc. Um, the sixth house also shows, as I said, bureaucracy, and it's in Capricorn here. So it's a little concerning that Pluto and Jupiter are conjunct, um, although P Pluto is actually Ganon so that's not concerning we want the judge to be right next to Ganon so he's standing up for him but I'm concerned especially because Saturn Jupiter and Pluto by now at this point is retrograde so there may be some type of red tape on this date that changes something or holds it up there may have to be another date set because she does something drastic or stupid like collapses or some she's going to do something <laughs> I can almost guarantee she will do something that will try to stop the proceedings now the judge's verdict is ruled by Aries which is Mars again as you remember before Mars was ruling the judge now his verdict is ruled by Mars and Mars is in this eighth house of death so the twelfth house and Mars in there can represent execution in the eighth house of death conjunct Neptune the ruler of prison in the ninth house of law once again shows me that the death penalty may be on the cards and Mercury is not only communication, as you'll recall, it, it's the witness and the ruler of the third house, which is communications. Now, at this point in time, this court date, we've got the asteroid DNA in here at five degrees of Libra. It seems as though the discussion is going to be about her mental state, 
her prior living and living within the armed forces, etc., and being a mother um, to the father's child. There's Capricorn, and that's father, and that's the moon, that's the mother. Um, but then it may shift over to discussion about DNA found and then hopefully that will trigger off the next trial which I have no doubt this is going to continue more than two, three times. Um, sentencing I don't think is going to happen for quite a long time. I can see that being really far off, maybe November December possibly even next year I, I'm not 100% sure how Colorado works like that but it just appears to me as though it's going to be slow now in terms of her appearance from the last chart and this one I think we're going to find that she has either lost weight or gained weight it's going to be drastic in one way or another I've got a feeling that perhaps it'll be she's gained weight um, she's going to look different again. She's going to put on a look that is more insane than normal. So her gaze will be all over the place. And like I said, she could pretend to fall, fall over or faint or do something like that. Um, she's either going to come out dressed neatly in a suit, Capricorn-like, or she'll come out in an orange jumpsuit and shackled. So I'm not sure about the law, but being in Leo here, the first house, that's orange and yellow, so it shows the prison colours. So I'm imagining she'll walk out in those, but the last chart and this one shows us that her presentation in court may be smarter visually, but she's still going to show this mental side to her that everyone, she'll think everyone feels compassion for her and that's what she's going to go for. I think, yep, she's going to look different again. She's going to play the insanity card. Fortunately, in, all of, in both of these charts, it shows a strong prosecution and a strong judge the judge's decision and the final matter so it's not just going to finish on the 8th of June okay I hope that helps you a little bit with horary and gives a little bit of peace with Letitia and her future and how she'll go down and we will see when we see okay take care everyone I'll be back with another couple of videos tomorrow Bye.